Thank you, Brother Tim. Amen. Praise the Lord. This pulpit was made for real Texans right here, wasn't it? <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I was born in Seattle, Washington. My parents moved to Texas when I was one year old, so my, gr my growth got stunted while I was up there. And, uh, but I never did lose my accent, praise the Lord, so I could still identify uh, somewhat, praise the Lord. Uh, my people know, the people that know me know that uh, I'm texting through and through, amen, praise the Lord. We don't even allow, you know, other stuff to be worn at OBI, you know, sports teams and stuff. Sometimes I like to tease those freshmen, they come in, they're nervous anyway, you know, and especially around me, they're nervous. And so they'll be wearing an OU shirt or something like that. Or something. I said, hey, uh, you had a dress code. <laughs> and they're going to look at me like, yeah, yeah. So we don't really allow that around here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, I'm so glad to be in God's presence. I'm telling you, uh, y'all could have just went right on with this thing and worshiped the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. <laughs> If you come here this morning needing a touch from the Lord, I can tell you that he's in the house because he said where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. Now, he's the most important one that's in the midst. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you turn with me to Psalms chapter 40, I'm going to preach this morning if the Lord would help me. Psalms chapter 40, we'll be looking at the first three verses. Praise the Lord. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 1, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we're thankful today for your blessings, your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your people today and your presence. I pray, God, that you'd anoint me for a little while to preach what you've laid on my heart for this service. Help us in the altars and strengthen us, and we'll give you the glory for it. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Uh, I, I like that, you know, what he said, he brought me up. Aren't you glad? The Lord always brings us up, amen. Praise the Lord. I, I don't know about you, but I was way down in a horrible pit. But uh, I looked up, and when I looked up, he looked down. And when he looked down, not only did he just see me and look down, but he reached down, uh, amen, and uh, he picked me up also out of the miry clay, uh, amen. I'm telling you, the Lord today has a reaching down hand, amen. That's what the Bible says there in Isaiah, there in chapter 59. He talks about, uh, uh, he said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot say neither is ear heavy than it cannot hear. Uh, amen. Do you remember the day that he reached way down and lifted you up out of sin out of that miry pit, pit set your feet upon a solid rock established your goings put a new song in your heart. Uh, amen. I'm telling you I remember the day that he brought me out. On September the 1st 1982 uh, Amen. I was lost and undone without God or his son and he reached way down for me. You may be in the house. You know, there's a lot of people in the house. Uh, you've been going to the house of the Lord for a long time, but there may be somebody in here in this house this morning that maybe this is just your first time, or maybe just, you know, you've just started coming to church. I'm telling you, uh, amen, the Lord can reach down and lift you up. Uh, amen. You don't have to know a whole lot. It's a good thing, amen, because, uh, you know, I didn't know very much when I got saved. I remember when the Lord brought me up. Uh, I, I came in that that night at the invitation of my cousin uh, Kenny and uh, when I, I was there and uh, I, I'm telling you we was flying high and I'm not talking about I'll fly away either but I want to tell you something when I got in that service when I got in that service that night uh, 
the Lord sobered me up uh, when they started singing the songs of Zion and we started feeling like we was feeling in here this morning. Uh, amen. We started feeling the good spirit of God moving the presence of God. Maybe you're not used to that, but I want to tell you something. God is in the house. Uh, amen. To reach down and lift you up. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, oh, when they gave you, when they asked if, uh, I'm tell, when I walked through the back door, I knew I was lost. I didn't need nobody to tell me I was lost. I knew I was lost. I mean, when the preacher was preaching, he said, if you knew you wouldn't go to heaven, he said, and you'd like to raise your hand tonight and want prayer, I mean, I raised my hand. I knew I was lost. I remember my cousin Randy, who was Kenny, was preaching, and my cousin Randy was standing at the back door. He was looking through there because he had his work clothes on. He said, I'm not, he told his wife, he said, I'm not going in there because, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go in church in my work clothes. And uh, she said, oh, you can go in there. And said, he looked through that little window in there and looked down the aisle, and he saw me in there. He said, man, if that guy there can go in there, anybody can go in there. <laughs> and he came on in. And he got saved that night. My wife, uh, his wife got saved that night. Amen. I got saved that night. I mean, they asked if anybody, you know, felt like that they wanted to come and pray. And, and man, I mean, the Lord just kind of swept me down the aisle. And I just stood in front of the pulpit because I didn't know how to pray. They pointed at the altar. I thought it was another bench to sit on. I went over and sat on it. But I want to tell you what, when they finally got me lined out and got my knees on the ground, it all started happening. Praise the Lord. I said, he reached way down. I don't care how far you are down. You can never fall farther than that reaching down hand, friend. I said, he's got a reaching down hand. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Uh, sometimes you got to realize you're down before he can lift you up. Uh, but I want to tell you, the Bible says it all of sin to come short of the glory of God. Uh, amen. Everybody in here needs a Savior. Uh, amen. I didn't need anybody to tell me I was lost. I knew I wasn't saved. Uh, amen. But I knew just as sure as I walked in that door, I knew I wasn't saved as sure as I walked out I knew I was uh, I knew that the Lord had done a work in my life uh, I mean uh, uh, he said uh, uh, talked about as Moses was lifted up uh, uh, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up uh, I want to tell you that crowd they crucified Jesus that day they lifted him up on the old rugged cross uh, amen but when they lifted him up uh, he reached down his hand and lifted whosoever will with him. I want to tell you, you can look up and look unto him. And if you look unto him this morning, he will lift you up out of that miry clay of sin. Amen. I know some people say, well, I've tried that before, brother. I just slipped. I just slipped right back in it. Amen. It reminded me of that little boy. <clears throat> he fell out of bed. And uh, his mama, you know, got him up, put him back in bed, was talking to him, said, why do you think you fell out, son? He said, I don't know, Mom. He said, I guess I just stayed too close to where I got in at. Uh, amen. Let me tell you something. When you get in this thing, get all the way in. Let that born again experience come down into your soul. Let it cleanse you. Amen. Let him work on you. I want to tell you, if we're, we confess our sins, First John 1, 9 says, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I, I'm telling you, you can get in this thing, uh, but you got to get all the way in. I was running a machine one time and uh, it wouldn't engage and it was, it was kind of getting me a little bit aggravated. And it wouldn't engage, wouldn't come on like it's supposed to. And I read this sign. It was on a handle. It says, we'll not function properly unless fully engaged. Amen. So when I fully engaged it, it worked properly. You know, sometimes people say it don't work, but if you fully engage, you get all the way in. You let this get all the way from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. When they say that service time is going on, you're there. When you're reading the Word of God, you're praying, you're seeking the face of God. Amen. You're doing your best Amen. to live an overcoming life. I'm telling you, that hand will reach down and give you strength. Amen. He'll help you to do it. And you can get all the way 
way in. Amen. And let the Lord help you. If you want that salvation experience that Paul spoke about. Uh, amen. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Uh, amen. And all, behold, all things are become new. Uh, if you get all the way in, tell the Lord Jesus Christ that you want to, uh, to him to make you a new person. You can't do it on your own. So many times people are worried about, well, I need to quit this and I need to quit that. You can't quit anything. Not without the help of the Lord. You know, I'm glad I came as I was that night. I came as I was. I didn't have any kind of background to sit there and, you know, and, well, if I do this, I do that. Just get all the way in and let him help you. Amen. I mean, he'll change your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. You say, well, I can't change my heart. No, you can't, but he can. Uh, praise the Lord. I mean, if you get that salvation experience that Paul talked about in Ephesians 4.22 that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which... Uh, 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 is corrupt according to the deceitful lust uh, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which is after God created in righteousness and true holiness uh, amen that salvation uh, amen where you go on down there in Ephesians 4 and it talks about uh, you quit lying and you quit stealing uh, and you quit cussing amen that corrupt communication uh, and you let anger be uh, taken out of your life by the Lord Jesus Christ I'm telling you you're going to be changed. Uh, amen. You cannot tell me that if a person has the blood of Christ applied to their life uh, and the Spirit of God is leading them and they're walking in the Spirit uh, and they're reading the Word of God and they're praying that it's not going to make a change in their life. Uh, amen. It'll make a change in your life just like it did mine. I said if you look up, He'll lift you up. Uh, amen. He'll, he'll give you a solid rock experience. Uh, amen. Uh, and when you get on that solid rock experience, it'll make you stand in the day of trial. It'll make you stand in the day of judgment uh, when the world's on fire uh, and the rock of ages is going to be the only refuge from the storm. Amen. I'm telling you uh, he'll set your feet upon a solid rock. Uh, I've said if you'll look up, uh, he will lift you up and give you that solid rock experience. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, the Bible says that he set my feet upon a rock. Uh, amen. I want to tell you there's a lot of things Things in this world that's changing. It's shifting. It's shaking. The social world is shaking. I mean, people have shook off all kinds of godly restraint. Uh, I mean, the economic world is shaking. Uh, amen. The uh, religious world is shaking. That only thing that we can trust in is to get on the solid rock. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you, like one man said, I've trembled on the rock, but the rock has never trembled on me. Amen. I'm telling you, he will lift you up. Uh, uh, people are trusting in uncertain riches. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to pursue things in life, uh, I mean, besides God, if you're just going to put all your trust in something besides God, uh, you need to make sure that that can help you uh, when the doctor says that there's no hope uh, you need to make sure that that will sustain you when your spirit is leaving your body for worlds unknown uh, and you need to be sure uh, that you can give an answer to God uh, in the day of judgment uh, friend I want to tell you something uh, uh, so then every one of us the Bible says uh, in Romans 14 shall give an account to God God. Uh, amen. The only remedy that we have for bad times is to look up. Uh, amen. Uh, the Bible tells us to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. Uh, you can look up above your situations as long as you're just looking around uh, and you're looking behind at the past. Friend, I'm telling you, you need to look up this morning for that reaching down hand. Uh, I like that verse in Deuteronomy 33 and 27. The eternal God uh, is thy refuge and underneath are his everlasting arms uh, amen I want to tell you when there's signs in the sun and the moon uh, and in the stars and on the earth uh, 
amen, those hands will still be underneath. Uh, the Bible talks about blood and fire and vaporous smoke. Uh, the ever, uh, everlasting arms will still be there. Uh, when men's hearts are failing them for fear uh, because of things that's happening on this earth, the everlasting arms will still be there. Uh, he is the great refuge and his arm will bring salvation uh, when everything else in life fails. Uh, amen, underneath are his everlasting arms. Uh, when the doctor fails, they're there. When the banker fails, they're there. Uh, amen. These hands can reach down farther than you can fall, friend. Uh, amen. Because uh, uh, whenever they lower you down in the grave, the everlasting arms will still be underneath. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how far you fall. Uh, the everlasting arms are still underneath. And I want to tell you something else. Uh, not only can they reach down farther, they can reach down faster. Glory to God. I want to tell you something. They talk about those eagles, how they teach those young eagles to fly. They'll take them real high and then spin out and under them. Uh, amen. That would be cruel but the, that mama eagle knows uh, that she can fly down faster than they can fall. Uh, I want to tell you something, friend. In life, sometimes we find ourselves uh, in a free fall. You may be here this morning finding yourself in a free fall, but I'm telling you underneath are uh, uh, the everlasting arms. Uh, that reaching down hand is right here in this service this morning. Morning, uh, and he wants to reach down uh, underneath uh, are the everlasting arms. Uh, amen. Some people say, well, you know, brother, I've gone too far. I've had people in my office, 18, 19, 20 years old, telling me, brother, I've gone too far. Now, it's serious to them, but it's funny to me because of how old I am. And I'm saying, son, you just got started. All you got to do is just turn around. Start walking a good straight path, and you walk right out of there. You walked in it, you can walk out of it. Amen. The Lord, the devil helped you walk in it. God will help you walk out of it. Amen. I want to tell you something. Well, have you really gone too far? Have you gone farther than Paul did when he was persecuting Christians? I mean, he hated the name of Jesus. He persecuted Christians and killed them. He said, I was a blasphemer. And the Lord, that reaching down hand, it reached down and picked him up and made a great apostle out of him, wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament and maybe arguably even the greatest preacher that there's ever been besides the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh, have you done worse than the apostle Peter after, you know, a while just sit there and curse and swear and said, I never know, I never knew him? Uh, no, but I want to tell you something. Some those uh, reaching down hands reached him out. He went up and out and wept bitterly, but that reaching down hand reached down and got a hold of him, uh, picked him up, filled him with a good Holy Ghost and fire. Uh, and the Bible says that before it was over, they was laying people in the street that maybe the shadow of Peter might pass over them so that they could be healed. I'm telling you, friend, you hadn't went farther than he can reach this morning. Uh, amen. Glory to God. I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, he's the reaching down hand. Uh, uh, he reached down, cast seven devils out of Mary Magdalene. Uh, he saved that Gadarene demoniac, cast over a thousand demons out of him with one word he said go. Uh, I'm talking about the power of the resurrected Savior. Uh, uh, yes, they lifted him up but when they lifted him up, friend, uh, he reached down uh, and lifted humanity with him. I'm talking about the look that lifts. Uh, you need to look up to him today. Uh, amen. I come to here to tell you, you're not beyond the reach of the one who created the universe. Amen. Not only did he uh, lift me up also out of a horrible pit, he set my feet on a solid rock, uh, but he established my goings and put a new song in my heart. Amen. I'm telling you that new song, brother, uh, new things. There's new things here this morning for you, friend. Uh, amen. I'm glad uh, uh, that there's a lot of new things in the Word of God. Uh, the Bible tells us that one of these days we're going to have a new name down here the devil he may drag your name in the dirt people may talk bad about you but I got a new name in heaven that had never been talked bad about brother 
Amen. I got one and only. Oh, glory to God. There's a lot of new things, friend, that can happen. There's new life available for you. That great born again experience. Uh, that experience that makes you feel clean on the inside uh, because the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you from all unrighteousness. Uh, that experience that puts joy uh, unspeakable and full of glory in your heart, puts that new song of joy in your heart. Brother, I want to tell you something. I I thank God for the songs of Zion. That's some wonderful singing in here this morning. Uh, amen. I'm glad that I've got a new song in my heart. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Uh, just to take him at his word. Uh, just to rest upon his promise and to know thus saith the Lord. Uh, I'm glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. Uh, and I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. I'm talking about a new song. Uh, amen. He's going to put in our heart. What a about some of these days I'm going home where no sorrows ever come. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Amen. Saved from heartaches, pain and care. We shall all that glory share. Sit down beside of my Jesus. Sit down and rest a little while. I'm talking about he'll put a new song in your heart. I'm on the upward way leading to that bright abode. Amen. Where forever my soul shall be free. Won't that be a Happy time, heaven's bells will sweetly chime when the home gates swing open for me. I said if you'll look up, he'll lift you up, set your feet upon a solid rock, amen, establish your path, your goings, put a new song in your heart. Amen, the new nature looks for new things. You think about a buzzard and an eagle, they're both looking for something to eat. Well, one of them's looking for something dead. And the other one's looking for something that's alive. This is living water, brother. Amen. This is alive. Praise the Lord. People have been eating too much roadkill. There's some good stuff in this word, brother. You can't survive on roadkill. You need some new things. You need new things vibrating in your soul, friend. Uh, amen. I want to tell you something. That new nature has new goals, new purpose in life. I'm glad the Lord gave me new goals, a new purpose in life. That day he saved me, brother. Chuck, I, I wouldn't have dreamed that he took me where he'd taken me. I wouldn't have dreamed that I'd been, I'm going into my 20th year teaching in Bible school. I never dreamed that would ever be possible. But new things. New goals, new purposes. Amen. God's got something that he put you here to do. Amen, friend. And you're not going to be able to do it until you let him lift you up. Uh, amen. I think about that woman in Luke chapter 13 and verse 10. It says, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and couldn't in no wise lift up herself. I want you to notice that she couldn't do it by herself. Amen. And when Jesus saw her, he called her uh, to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. I'm telling you, this woman's weakness was beyond all human help. She could in no wise lift up herself, which implies that she tried. She tried to. Maybe you're here and you've tried to. You said, well, I've tried to lift myself up. Let me tell you, you're not going to be able to do it. That clay, that's, that is called miry clay. It's just like quicksand. I'm glad for strong people, brother. Praise the Lord. There, there's some good. I, I mean, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you. If I'm lifting something heavier, if I'm doing some heavy work, I like a big old boy on the end of it. I usually try to work my way to the middle. You know. That way I'm just kind of giving a little bit of instruction. You know, you, you ever been in a bind with something and then somebody really, I mean, they had some muscles on, they had some strength to them. They just came and got a hold of it and just lifted the load. That's the way it is with the Lord. 
Friend, I want to tell you something. I appreciate all strong men, but they're nothing in compared to the Lord. And you've tried to get out of that miry clay yourself, I mean, but you it's been a long time, and you've never been able to do it. I'm telling you, all you got to do is look up. Let him reach down and grab a hold of your hand, friend. I'm telling you, he can lift you up out of there this morning. Uh, amen. Uh, I mean, she had done her best. She had tried all the physicians. She had done everything uh, uh, that she could do. But verse 12 says, when Jesus saw her, uh, he called her to him. I, I'm telling you I'm glad when Jesus uh, uh, sees us. Uh, he's in the service. You know that little woman that was bowed down nobody, I mean she had that infirmity 18 years and they was probably used to her they probably just overlooked her. Nobody, I mean she wasn't noticeable in the crowd. They just overlooked. But Jesus saw her. I don't know if anybody else took the time to shake her hand or not but I'm telling you Jesus saw her. Praise God, those eyes of compassion, they're running to and fro right here in this service right now. Jesus sees you. You say, nobody sees me. Let me tell you something, Jesus sees you. Uh, amen. Uh, he saw her. That eyes that saw the man uh, that had laid at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Uh, the eyes that saw the widow of Nain's tears. Uh, amen. Uh, oh, I want to tell you something. The eyes that are going to and fro over all the earth to find someone to show himself strong in. These are the eyes that saw the multitude and had compassion upon them uh, uh, because uh, there was they were like a sheep having no shepherd uh, the Bible says uh, uh, that he looked at her uh, praise God I'm telling you the look of Jesus can get you back on the right road uh, amen just like it did the apostle Peter uh, he called her to him the voice of Jesus uh, that voice that never a man spake like this uh, the voice that called Lazarus out of the tomb the voice that calmed the storm when it was raging out of control uh, and the Bible says he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God immediately praise the Lord it doesn't take long praise the Lord for the Lord to touch you and put you on the right path praise the Lord you say well I don't know if I can live let me tell you something what you need to do right now is realize that you're drowning in the quicksand of life and you don't need to worry about what you're going to do out in the future you need to worry about getting out of where you're at right now amen so he can set your on that solid rock and put a new song in your heart. See what the deal is is you're looking too far down the road at what you can do and I'm telling you you can't do anything without his help. But brother when he's walking beside you there's nothing that's impossible. Praise the Lord I, I'm telling you you need to, amen, to let him reach down and help you here this morning. Uh, oh, the Bible says immediately she was made straight. You know the Lord he loves undoing what the devil does. But it's six or seven words. He undone 18 years. Just like that in one sentence. Praise the Lord. It don't take the Lord very long to get it done. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you something today. When the Lord straightens you out, you'll praise him. Amen. You'll be thankful that you reached up and he'll reach down. I mean, you need God to move for you today. I'm telling you, he's here to work and move. Uh, Brother Tim, if y'all come and help me, I'm getting ready to close. But his voice is calling. He desires to lay his hand on you right now. You ever felt the touch of the Lord? I mean, that hand, he can make all the difference. The presence of God makes the difference in your life. Praise the Lord. I remember when I went back to work, they said, wow, what happened to you? I said, I really don't know. But it happened, friend. I want to tell you something, it happened. I couldn't explain all of it, but I sure did enjoy it. And I appreciated the way I felt when the Lord reached way down for me. It's time for you to lift up your eyes, friend. You need to come and lay all the broken pieces of your life right down at the feet of the master potter. He'll take every one of those pieces, friend, and he'll put them in a place to where he can make a vessel of honor out of it. He can make something out of your life. He did mine. I mean, I want to tell you, just like he did Randy Snow, just like he did Tim Laredo, 
and Dathan Tucker and Preston Moreno and so many other people in here just like he did me when I laid it all at his feet and said, Lord, this is so messed up I can't even start on it. But he knows what to do with it, friend. Amen. When they lifted him up on that old rugged cross, he reached down one hand and grabbed the hand of sinful men. And he reached up with the other hand and grabbed the hand of his holy heavenly Father. And he put those two hands together and he said, Be you reconciled. Amen. I want to tell you something. The blood of Jesus Christ reconciles us to the heavenly father I want to tell you what he said whosoever will let him come and take of the water of life Uh, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die Uh, whosoever believeth shall have eternal life Uh, he said in Isaiah 118 come now let us reason together saith the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be it's wool. Are you here and you're struggling? Amen. I want to tell you the Lord wants to help you today. Praise the Lord. Why don't you stand with me here this morning? I preach to you that the Lord can lift you up, friend. And uh, it's no accident that you're here. I, on September the 1st, 1982, I was in a Wednesday night service by divine appointment. You're here by divine appointment this morning. Because the Lord is reaching. He's reaching to you, friend. You feel that reaching down hand? I'm telling you, all you got to do is come down this altar, kneel down, repent of your sins, and say, Lord, I'm in that miry clay. I'm in that pit. I need you to reach down your hand. Right now, you're here. You'd say, I'm going to walk on down this this altar this morning, uh, and I'm going to give my heart to the Lord. Let me tell you something, friend. He said, if we confess our sins, First John 1 and 9, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, you feel the presence of God. You feel that reaching down hand. Uh, amen. Saying, why don't you come on unto me? Uh, Amen. Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You say, I need some rest this morning. Uh, Amen. Would you step out from where you are? Come on down this altar uh, and let the Lord help you this morning. Uh, I'm telling you, that reaching down hand, friend, it's here today. Uh, Amen. You can't do it on your own, but if you'll let him help you. uh, Amen. I'm telling you, he said, whosoever will, let him come. Uh, Amen. Maybe you're here and you need to be renewed in your spirit. Uh, I'm telling you, David said in that beautiful 20th, 23rd Psalm. Uh, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Uh, you say, I'm not in the miry pit, but I sure would like the hand of the Lord to work for me this morning. I need the hand of the Lord to work in an area of my life. Uh, I'd like everybody that would. Let's come. Uh, there's some come to pray. Let's pray with them, friend. Uh, I want to tell you, He's here to renew, here to restore. He's got a reaching down hand, friend. Uh, hallelujah. He wants to help you this